Shut the outer door, now! I'm impressed you made it this far, but you are too late. Soon the Queen will be dead, and General Vaklu will be the new king. This is no ordinary door between us. The same material is used for the hull of capital-class vessels. I'm afraid you will find it quite impregnable. I'm afraid it is. Now, if you'll excuse me, we have one last barrier to take care of. Tell the Colonel we'll need more of our men to smoke the Royalists out of their hole. I don't trust those Sith... or oh, their beasts. And another thing, if I catch any more of my men looting, then the Queen's Guard will be the least of your worries. Thanks for your help. Queen Talia is the rightful ruler of Onderon. I don't know how you made it, but well done. Come in quickly, before more Sith or Vaklu troops arrive. We got split off from Talia's troops by the currents of this war. We really need to talk. 
but Cadron and I are coordinating the defense of the war. I know Captain Cadron needs someone to handle a dangerous assignment. He's in the other room. Talk to him. No one else could do the job. I'm not her bodyguard. We were fighting at the palace gates. There were too many of them. We'll talk when all of this is over. Until then, may the Force be with you. So, you're the Jedi, eh? Well, the comm chatter we've intercepted is filled with reports about you. You fought right through their flank on the sky ramp? We desperately need someone like you. We've managed to hold this part of the palace, but Vaklu's forces control the rest. We need to get to the Queen before that flaming Drexel breaks through the inner door. There are two security consoles in the palace. The primary security console is on the other side of the palace. There's an expert slicer over there who's been hampering our every move. We need to transfer all primary functions to our terminal here, then disable the primary security console. That will also take their slicer out of the picture. After that, we'll control security again, and can get to General Vaklu before he gets to the Queen. Feel free to take anything from the armory lockers in the next room, if you haven't already. This is no time for niceties. The other security room is the furthest room down the South Hall. You're probably going to have to fight a legion of Vaklu's troops and the flaming Sith, but from what I've seen, you're up to it. Talk to the Corporal. He can take you quickly to the palace entrance when you're ready to go to the South Hall. May the Force be with you. Thanks for your help. Queen Talia is the rightful ruler of Onderon. entrance. We can leave immediately if you like. Let's hurry then. Vaklu's forces could break into the throne room at any moment.
Gather our forces. Make sure the defenses are set. Colonel Tobin says the Jedi is coming our way. Take your beasts and attack him. We need more time to prepare. I'm going to the control room. Perhaps the captain can be persuaded to cooperate. Something you need. Yes. Thanks for your help. Queen Talia is the right ruler of Onderon. What is it? What's wrong? I hear you. We don't have time for your resistance, Captain Riken. We need the override code for the palace shields. And I told you that I don't know. You scanned my ID, you know my post is the merchant quarter. I'm sure that's what you'd like me to believe. I have been authorized to use any means at my... Blast! Defend the security room with your lives! The Jedi could ruin everything.
hear you. Salje a listo park norcha, lus ni hacha batishi chort. Kavo dumpe a botenia, da ci morotaza kamsa. Ba wan maderancha, you come most croon. Nande mi so ku kuran marenden krabanozot. Dragon X1 gestale lorcha, jemu mi pete rung choda? Ruka sole molo soch? Kavo dumpa, mo wendido chokerembi norta kunyun wish chawa kachuba. Sura. Daci moro tu cocanza. Yatuka, u wan rica, chotin, wanima, orata, wakata, ci luma lithba. Bram tabanin socio. Da come just mag miki baranje to so so rica chondin? Wana magrable mogo. Cavadumpa, mo wendido chokerembi norta kunyun wish chawa kachuba. Sura, daci moro tu cocanza. Cavadumpa, mo wendido chokerembi norta kunyun wish chawa kachuba. Sura, daci moro tu cocanza. Cavanata galu! Cavanami donki grato. Yatuka, u wan rica chotin wanima orata wakata ci luma lithba. Cavadumpa, mo wendido chokerembi norta kunyun wish chawa kachuba. Sura, daci moro tu cocanza. Bram tabanin soju. Da come jus mak miki baranje to so so rica chondin? Wana magrable mogo. Yatuka, u wan rica chotin wanima orata wakata ci luma lispa. Bram tabanin soju. Da come just mak mik... 
Yatuka, Uwanrika, Chotin, Wanim, Aurata, Wakata, Chiluma, Lithpa, Bramtaba, Nim, Sochu. The come just mak miki baranye to so so rika chondin, wana magrable mogo. Kavadumpa, mo win. Thank you. Now that you've got me out, you need to get the primary security console's override code, then lock the terminal down. Once you've got that code, if you can get to the secondary security station, you'll control the entire palace's security systems. You have? You don't waste a minute. Captain Kadron will open the doors to Vaklu and Tobin any moment then. Let's head to the throne room right away. I hear you. Will you just die already? You will go no further than this. You're too late. Our pet beast is about to breach the force field to the throne room. The queen will be dead in moments. Watch out! I've lost control of the beast! Ignore the beast! Into the throne room! The queen must die! Don't oh, blast it all!
Your time is at an end, Talia. Your people have abandoned you, and now your life is forfeit. You would destroy everything just for your ambition, Vaklu. The Republic, ISIS, everything. That is a gross simplification, Talia. Change is a painful process. A price must be paid. But Onderon will have a new destiny, one larger than you could imagine. You're getting careless, Vaklu. One more mistake, and you're the one who will pay the price. Damn you! Your skill with the blade won't save you from my men. Goodbye, Talia. Fire! What? The Jedi lives? But how? Kill him and the Queen Men. Quickly. They must not be allowed to live. You've won this battle, Talia. But your reign won't be an easy one. The Republic is a sinking ship, and you're too attached to it. He's too dangerous to leave alive. As distasteful as it is, it might be best to silence him forever. Until he's dead, all of Onderon is in peril. So what will it be, Your Majesty? Send me to your best detention cell. I will be free within the week, and vengeance will be mine. Are you so sure of my decision, Vaklu? I appreciate the Jedi's counsel, but as monarch, I decree you are guilty of treason. The punishment is death, to be carried out immediately. Captain Cadron? Talia, you can't. You're... but you're... you're too weak. What about my trial? Your whole life has been a trial, Vaklu, but it's over now. You are right. We can't detain you. Too many people are still loyal to you. You've left me no real option. Men, ready blasters. Aim. But you can't. This, this can't be. Fire! What is done is done. I don't think the service you have given us can ever be repaid. I must go with Captain Cadron. The fighting must be stopped. I will be back shortly to try and repay you. The crisis is over thanks to you and Master Kavar. I believe he'd like to speak to you, if you'll excuse me. wound is not a mortal one, though it has been some time since I exercised my healing powers. There is a shred of life within you still. A gift from your master, no doubt. Awaken, Colonel Tobin. Your part in this is not over. Colonel Tobin, I am with Vaklu. The war has gone against him. He sent me to rescue you, to tell you you must make haste off planet. The Jedi have struck. They had a secret academy buried on Telos, and they are showing themselves at last. We are all in danger. What? But the Jedi are gone. 
They have all but vanished. So we all thought, but they have hidden themselves on Telos. Out of my way, old woman. This war can still be won, and Onderon can be freed. Indeed. This war is far from over. The Queen has requested you stay here until she gets back. I imagine you'll get some sort of reward. Talk with Master Kavar. She shouldn't take too long. The Force works in mysterious ways, it seems. There are times I'm not convinced it doesn't have a sense of humor. We spend all this time looking for you, and you came to us. I thought you might return to Onderon. Looks like just in time. I told the other Masters that our only chance to figure out what was happening to us was to find you, and try to understand what happened to you. I don't know how much you know about this threat that's striking at the Jedi. It's attacking us through the Force. Varuk didn't believe me, but he was willing to travel to Dantooine if only to help the settlers there, and perhaps protect what was left of the Jedi Enclave. Whatever the reason, having us all drop out of sight, I thought might make the enemy more bold. But then you happened. You came back and you became a new target for whoever was attacking us. They were places touched by war, and we thought there was a chance you would return to these worlds, if only to try and make peace with what happened there during the war. But now the Sith have revealed themselves. That means the remaining Jedi will gather on Dantooine. From there, we can counterattack. Telos? But Telos was destroyed during the Jedi Civil War. I heard they're trying to rebuild. Atris? I thought Atris had gone to Qatar. Too many Jedi have scattered. The Council needs to gather. We cannot remain concealed any longer. The difficulties you surmounted to get here. You must have many questions. You deserve answers. We knew that someone was preying on us, hunting us. Finally, the Jedi decided to take action and called a secret conclave on Qatar to decide what must be done. Before the meeting could even begin, all the Jedi on the planet were killed, along with the Miralukas and all other life on the planet. Their deaths could be felt throughout the galaxy. So the Council decided that we must not present ourselves as a target again. The consequences to others were just too great. That we should use our resources to find who was responsible and deal with them. I think you're the only one who's made progress. Whatever I can tell you, I will. It's a long story, but there's a reason the Jedi have scattered across the galaxy. We've come to worlds such as this one. Worlds touched by war, or great tragedies, can be felt within the Force, strongly. We thought that by traveling to such worlds, it would help conceal us from the eyes of the enemy. And they were places we thought we might find you. Whatever I can tell you, I will. I know that all too well. I came here to find them, to trace them to their source. The war on Duxon and Onderon. I had thought that perhaps the tragedies that occurred here were concealing them. The Jedi Order has been fighting the dark side since the beginning. Our rules and the Jedi Code provide protection from what's inside each of us. The dark side is always there, and it is something that can never truly be defeated. I feel our current troubles, though, are beyond what we faced before. This threat that is targeting us, drawing us out, it's not a battle we're used to, and it has ended many of us. Not enough. I feel it is something that was born from the wars that have struck the Republic. The threat is Sith, but the manner and timing of their attacks is difficult to defend against. We don't know all that the Sith planned during the Jedi Civil War. What secret training grounds may still remain. What worlds he discovered. We just don't know. Even after we deal with this current threat, I fear we may be dealing with the legacy of the Jedi Civil War for years to come. You've had more success than I. General Vaklu's men and their allies effectively kept me pinned inside the palace. I felt all along that Vaklu had contacted the Sith. But the identity and purpose of the Sith, uh, I can't say. The Jedi Order has been fighting the dark side since the beginning. Our rules and the Jedi Code provide protection from what's inside each of us. The dark side is always there, and it is something that can never truly be defeated. 
I feel our current troubles, though, are beyond what we faced before. This threat that is targeting us, drawing us out, it's not a battle we're used to, and it has ended many of us. They wanted to aid General Vaklu in breaking away from the Republic. If Onderon became independent, this place would be an excellent staging ground for them. But I fear it was more than that. That the consequences of Onderon's fall would have greater implications for the galaxy. Whatever I can tell you, I... Cut you off from the Force? Why do you think the Council was responsible for that? No. I'm afraid the cause of your condition was as great a mystery to the Council as it is to you. Whatever I can tell you, I will. There was nothing else we could do. You defied the Council. You followed Revan to war. I know why you did it, but in so doing, much more harm was done. But you must understand, the Exile was never the punishment you thought it to be. We could not have made you do such a thing in any event. I think you knew, inside, what you needed to do in order to heal. All those lives during the Mandalorian Wars, and all those you served beside, too much death leaves echoes in the Force. It is the price for having such connections. I suspect that is why you chose to accept the Council's judgment, to wander beyond the Rim, and why you traveled with no one and did not stay in any place too long. I have thought of you since your trial, and there are times when I wonder if being connected to the Force is always the gift it is believed to be. Whatever I can tell you, I will. That sounds like the bond that often forms between Master and Apprentice, but to that degree? You always did form connections to others, strong ones, even when you were a student. But what you are describing is beyond me. I'm sure others in the Jedi Council would be able to assist you. If you could find them. Whatever I can tell you, I will. You always had deep connections to the Force. I'm glad to see that it is once again your ally. When I first sparred with you during your training as a Padawan, I could tell that you were different. And it wasn't just your strong connection to the Force. Whatever I can tell you, I will. Scattered, searching for you. Going to places where they thought they might cross your path. You were our last hope. I think we all know that Vruk isn't easily swayed from his convictions, and his views on anyone who went to the Mandalorian Wars are low. Yes. At least, that's what I asked them to do. I believe you are the key to this whole war. When you stood before us in the Council Chamber on Coruscant, we felt something from you we'd never felt before. It was as if the Force had died within you, leaving you hollow. We had suspicions as to why this was, but nothing definite. But rather than try to understand, we sent you away. I think because at some level there was fear. We live our whole lives in touch with the Force in touch with life all around us. And you had a gift in that regard. You formed bonds so easily, and they flowed deep between you and others. To see such emptiness in the Force standing before you, it's not an easy thing to face. Whatever is attacking us, it is leaving something in its wake, something we haven't felt since you stood before us in judgment. The deaths of the Jedi, the destruction of Qatar, all of these things are leaving behind echoes, like the one we felt from you in the Council Chamber. It was clear to us, to me, that we had to find you. But we couldn't call you back from exile, because we didn't know where you'd gone. Plus, there was a chance we might put you in danger, and that we couldn't allow. If you couldn't feel the Force, then it would just make you a target. I don't know how you got back, but I'm glad you're here. The thing is, in traveling to these places, these places where war was fought, we felt the same thing. Echoes. Something happened in all these places, but it's hard to figure out what. It's hard to sense things through the Force in such places. Too much pain occurred here. It makes listening to the Force difficult. We resolved to meet again on Dantooine, but only when the threat revealed itself. Unfortunately, I happened to be here when it struck. Now that we've stabilized Onderon, I can join the others on Dantooine. There is something I would like to teach you. 
It is a technique which, I believe, will aid you in the trials ahead. The Jedi Order generally scorns the unnecessary use of the Force as a weapon. However, sometimes it is necessary to deal with certain powerful threats with a potent Force attack. This form is used for such dire situations. Be warned, though. Using your powers in this manner will quickly deplete your Force energy. Excellent! I'm impressed with how quickly you've mastered this form. I always knew you were gifted. I'm going to Dantooine. The Jedi Council vowed to assemble again when the Sith revealed themselves. Now that they've attacked Onderon, we can act. Our paths will cross again. May the Force be with you. I'm sorry to keep you here. I needed to thank you personally for all of your help. Onderon owes both you and Master Kavar a debt that can never truly be repaid. Battles still wage in our streets, but by morning the conflict should be over. I recognize you must leave soon, but please, take this. I had also planned on giving you some relics from Onderon's past, but Vaklu's troops looted our museum. I hope the credits and my sincere thanks are enough. Captain Bostuka has made arrangements for a shuttle to take you to your ship. I fear it will be quite some time before you can come back. The war was brief, but destructive. I will focus all of my energy on rebuilding Isis. Thank you again. I must go. If you will follow me, I will take you to your shuttle. Welcome back from Onderon. How did you fare? That is good news. The universe tends toward unity and balance, and you served as its catalyst in Onderon. We should return to the Ebon Hawk now and plot our next course of action. Yes? You may ask. I feel more at peace, yes. The battle there was difficult, but I think I understand such a trial was necessary. And I learned something of myself there. Something I did not know before. Perhaps I shall speak of it another time, but not now. It might be helpful if I made some changes to my remote's maintenance laser to do spot repairs. That would be a welcome improvement. My combat effectiveness could be better sustained, providing an advantageous arrangement. And my miniature counterpart would finally be able to pull his weight in a fight. Then, I'll work on it when we get back to the Hawk. There. You should be able to do some quick fixes. You won't be able to perform serious repairs, but you should be able to patch up any broken droids. You know, I think it's time I gave your cutting laser a little boost. It works fine for repairs, but we could use your help in a firefight. Worry about it. We'll make sure they keep you out of their scopes. Think of it this way. You can keep Goto in line with it.
If you've got some time, I'd like to see what I can upgrade for you. Yes, I do have a few moments to spare for your work. I would like to know what he is doing here, though. He helps me out with repairs. That isn't a problem, is it? I suppose not. Perhaps in working on my circuitry, your assistant will learn something about how a fully functional droid is constructed. Just ignore him and let's get to work. I would appreciate that. Our group has little in the way of time to spare, and I would not want to delay you from your other duties. Right. Let's get you open. See what you can do. I have to say, you are put together quite well. <laughs> there wasn't much to do. As I told you, my design is streamlined and efficient, though I am pleased that you were able to make some improvements, and this was not just a waste of my valuable time. There were a few things from my remote that I was able to integrate into your construction. I see. Well, thank you. I'll let you get back to your work. Yes, General? I feel a sense of peace. It was difficult, but I guess I've come to understand something about myself. It's nothing, just something that opened my eyes. Ask me about it some other time. Was there something you wanted me for? Query, is there someone that you need killed, Master? Statement? Master, assassination is my primary function. It is only expected that when you speak to me, it is to give me the order to kill. Statement. Oh, very well, Master. No doubt you are bothering me because you wish to interrogate me with harmless, non-lethal questions. Or perhaps you need the deck of your freighter scrubbed, or an exciting alien text translated. My circuits are abuzz with anticipation of what your next task will be for me that does not involve ending the life of an organic meat bag that deserves death. Yes? I am training, so that if danger should strike, my body and my reflexes will be prepared. That, and I had forgotten how long hyperspace travel can be. What do you mean, Pazak? What, again? No, I do not trust him. That is untrue. You and the Iridonian trust each other. Or at least the Iridonian trusts you. We heard much of the Iridonian when we served Atris. Atris believed that the Iridonian held the knowledge to restoring Telos. The reasons for such siphoning of power are complicated, and I do not know all the answers. But there is something greater being achieved. The teachings at the Academy must be preserved, even if it draws strength from Telos. Yes. His skill with machines is something beyond which most can aspire to. His shield technology surpasses the designs of even the most skilled of Ichani power architects. I do not realize if you know what it means to have such a one respect and follow you. The Iridonian allied himself with no one on the entire world of Telos, yet he will follow you at the risk of his life. His stance, in many ways, mirrors yours. Where he walks, he carries a world upon his shoulders, and like you, I do not know if he has ever faced it. I will respect your wishes, and his. Forgive me. The Mandalorian Wars were like that for many. Many returned, who could not tell of their experiences in a way that could bring meaning to them.
Yeah, something wrong. More grenades? All right. Go ahead and ask. Talk. About what? Why, you trying to be my father? No thanks. Already had one. Somewhere. Are you sure you're a Jedi? That exile of yours must have gone on longer than I thought. Look, you're way too old for me. Even if I were interested, you couldn't handle me anyway. I mean, you're really good in a fight, and you've got those intense eyes. And it's obvious you take care of your body, but I really don't have the luxury of getting attached to you. Besides, you already have your little entourage. I don't want to be a part of the pack, you know? Look, if we start sharing a bunk, the other girls would get upset, and then I'd have to kick the hell out of them to show them who's the pack leader around here. No thanks. You're a sweet old guy. But let's keep it professional. It's more than age. I thought I'd seen a lot, but you look like you're a hundred inside. Go ahead and ask. I've killed people before, but not if I don't have to. I know. It's different. I don't know why. I don't know. I... I haven't killed anyone for a long time. But when I'm around you, suddenly it's like I've always been doing it. It's like a reflex. I don't like it. And I don't know when or why it became so easy. Go ahead and ask. Hanhar is only a bounty hunter because that's the closest word for what he does. He's not out for credits. It's more vicious than that. And it runs a lot deeper. It's like he's out to make the whole galaxy suffer. Every living thing in it. He wants to break them, ruin them. And when they can't suffer anymore, he wants them dead. I didn't kill him once. Biggest mistake ever. Do you really want to hear this? Well, Hanhar and me go way back, in the worst possible way. He's from some forest planet on the Outer Rim where Zerka had set up one of their slaving operations. I don't remember the name. Something with too many K's and Y's. It sounds like you're gargling Ronto spit when you say it. No idea. He's just... Hanhar. I hope there aren't any more like him. I get the impression he's not a good representative of his people, though. He's the equivalent of a mad calf hound among Rontos. Some of Voga the Het's men said Hanhar killed his own tribe, but those two crud thugs lie every time they open their mouths, so who knows? Well, not for long. Once off planet, Hanhar escaped from the Zerka slavers, then killed them all. I don't know. I always thought he just liked using them as weapons. Well, before you get too proud of him, Hanhar figured Zerka had the right idea. I don't think he understood the concept of slavery before, at least on the scale that Zerka practiced it. But now he did. You ever hear of Dursan III, or the ID Cluster Colonies? Right, that's because Hanhar happened. He makes what happened to his homeworld look like an exercise in community building. He's not a bounty hunter. He's a slaver. A predator. It's like he's out to enslave or kill every human in the galaxy, like he's trying to settle some huge score or debt. I don't get it, but he's dangerous. Anyone who paid credits. And sometimes, he just hunted humans for sport. The ones who survived, he sold to the exchange, to the huts, to anyone who'd buy bodies, living or dead. He and Voga used to do big credit transactions. That hut really liked the look of unwrinkled humans for some reason. Didn't make him too popular with the other huts, let me tell you. I was prey. And not only did I escape, but I saved his life while doing it. He's been hunting me ever since. I don't pretend to understand it, but among his people, they have these codes of honor. But somewhere along the line, Hanhar's got twisted. His people form these things called life debts. If you save the life of one of them, they pledge themselves to you. Well, with Hanhar, he can't escape that life debt. It's bred into him. But he hates every other living thing in the galaxy, so pledging himself to someone else, especially a human, was unbearable. 
So when I saved his life, it was the worst thing I could do. It was like slavery all over again, but it was in his head. It was like it pushed him over the edge. A life debt to Hanhar is a death sentence. He'll hunt you until you're dead. When I saved his life, it meant he had to kill me. And so he kept chasing me in hopes I would die. I think the fact I showed him mercy after hating humans for so long, that was something he couldn't stand. Probably. But if he had multiple life debts, especially to humans, Hanhar would probably go mad. He was angry before, sure, but he'd be ten times worse if that happened. Hanhar's tough. Really tough. And when he loses it, it's like nothing can stop him. I've seen him shrug off blaster bolts, both and stunners, and even survive a freighter crash on Dursan 3. He keeps coming. Oh, I'm glad he's gone. It's like a weight off my shoulders. I don't have to keep watching my back every minute, wondering when he's going to show up. And he always did. It's like he always knew where I was. Trust me, if he was still alive, he'd be chasing us even now, waiting to ambush us when we least expect it. And he always shows up at the worst possible time. He was one of the best bounty hunters on Nar Shaddaa. Anhar never gives up on his prey. Or his life debts. He's a hunter. He's a natural predator. Go ahead and ask. Something up? All right, what did you want to know? It's another story. Hit the ground. This is Korriban. Why would one of the Jedi you're looking for come here? It seems quiet. Just the wind. But deep beneath the surface, you can feel the pain of what took place here. There is great power in this place, for those who can hear its call. There is much that would draw a Jedi to this place. The resting grounds of the ancient and more recently departed Sith contain many teachings believed lost. The most likely place to find our lost Jedi is the ruins of the old academy. After Malak and his army were defeated, instead of restoring order to Korriban, Revan suddenly departed, leaving both his destination and reasons for leaving a mystery. It took a year or two for the Republic to send a force here to deal with any Sith that may have remained. They found Korriban much as we have, barren and lifeless. It was assumed that the remnants of the Sith turned on each other, vying for what little power remained. The Republic found evidence that several Sith Lords escaped Korriban, fleeing to remote sections of the galaxy. As lifeless as it seems, the dark side is very strong here. The Sith Lords would not ignore such a powerful place. There is much that can be learned, even here. If you walk Korriban's surface, you shall walk it without me. I cannot. 
This place is strong with the dark side. It is difficult to center myself here. Korriban holds few secrets from me, but much that you should learn. Perhaps not, but I would caution you to guard your feelings carefully here. Korriban attacks the spirit and the body, and there have been few who can fight its power. I will remain here and meditate. Our link remains. I shall contact you and provide guidance when needed. The Academy is on the other side of this valley. Be careful. Dark energy fills these ruins, and even the fallen Sith live still. The structures you see around you are the plundered tombs of the ancient Sith Lords. Each tomb was once infused with the history and heritage of the old Sith Empire, containing great mysteries and powerful relics of the Force. However, even the many traps could not long hold back the curious, the fools, and the weak. And so these tombs fell, spilling their secrets into the hands of those unable to comprehend or preserve them. The broken corpses before you are all that remain of the Sith on Korriban. I doubt there is much to be gained from looting these bodies. It would be best to leave them be. Fool! You've disturbed the spirits of this place, and they have sent their guardians. Hisses are semi-intelligent beasts, corrupted and strengthened by prolonged exposure to the dark side. As creatures of the Force, they have a limited ability to mask their presence. Hisses are drawn to suffering and carnage. They must have fed on all the corpses left over from the war here on Korriban. The angry phantoms of the Sith, too weak to influence the sentient, have taken these Hisses as thralls to their will. Oh, my God. 
You can just barely see the Sith archaeologists' efforts to uncover relics of the ancients. The new Sith Order sought to progress quickly by finding objects of power. I can only imagine what was lost forever due to the carelessness of these excavators. Now the excavation has been almost completely undone by five years of wind and sand. So does Korriban protected secrets. This way leads to the tomb of Ajanta Paul, a fierce Sith Lord. According to legend, the blade proved more fearsome than the master, leading to his demise. Ajanta's dark spectre lived on through the centuries until Revan entered the Sith Lord's tomb in search of the blade. Revan sent Ajanta Paul's spirit into oblivion and claimed the blade for himself. Unknown. Some have suggested that the blade led to Revan's demise, as it did Ajanta Paul. That is only speculation, however. Where Revan wanders now is knowledge that only Revan holds. Before you is the tomb of the great Sith Lord, Marka Ragnos, a half-breed who possessed tremendous strength, both physically and in the Force. Ragnos held power for over a century, using his cunning to turn his enemies against each other. His death left a great vacuum of power. We're standing close to the spot where Naga Sadao first confronted Ludo Kresh to vie for domination of the Sith. Their struggle nearly resulted in a civil war that would have torn the Sith apart before they ever threatened the Republic. Yes, it is the way of the Sith. They must continually test their strength against each other, even if it means destroying themselves. As fate would have it, a pair of hyperspace explorers from Sinagar landed on Korriban. Naga Sadao manipulated the Sith into believing they were a sign of impending Republic invasion. This fear resonated with many Sith who were discontent with the lack of expansion of the Sith Empire during the reign of Marka Ragnos. Thus, Naga Sadao became Ragnos's successor. Is the tomb of Naga Sadao, successor to Marka Ragnos, and the Sith Lord responsible for nearly conquering the Republic in the Great Hyperspace War a millennia ago. More recently, this tomb was where Revan confronted Uthar Vin, the leader of the Sith Academy. When Revan left Korriban, the Sith Academy was thrown into turmoil. With their leader gone, many fought for the right to rule. And so, the Sith here turned on each other, resulting in the carnage you can see covering the surface of this valley. This was the tomb of Tulak Horde, 
known as the greatest lightsaber duelist of the Sith Lords. His skill was considered remarkable even in his time when many true lightsaber masters lived. If you were to face an ancient Sith Lord in combat, you would learn that we are as children playing with toys compared to the prowess of the old masters. That is unknown, but supposedly he created a holocron to teach his technique to other Sith. The holocron would have been laid to rest in his tomb. Unfortunately, Tulak Horde's tomb was among the first penetrated by the grave robbers of the new Sith Order. If the holocron has survived, I doubt anyone living would know its location. It almost has a presence about it. Evil. Almost hungry. There is great power and dark energy within this cave. I would advise you to finish your explorations within the Academy before venturing into the cave. It's unlikely the Jedi Master we are looking for is within. I see no tracks, no disturbance of recent travel. You can expect more than these beasts within the Academy. Be prepared. is here. Find him.
Someone did quite a job on this door. Reinforced and welded shot. We're not getting through, that's for sure. A lightsaber was used to fuse this door shut.
Jedi lost. For answers, there are none. The call of Korriban is strong, but it is the call of the dead. It is fitting you came here. I have studied you and found nothing but weakness. Yet still she clutches at you, as if you are all that gives her life. She clings to hope that perhaps she can train one as great as her first. She is a fool who escaped death once. She will not do so again. I know her as an apprentice knows their master, and as a master knows an apprentice. I want her to die and see all that she has built cast down. All that she holds dear in shards at her feet. But you do not know her as I do. You have not survived her teachings as I have. And you have not bested her in battle as I have. You are nothing. Yet still she walks with you is willing to sacrifice herself for you. I have studied you. I know the paths you walked in exile. I know your teacher. 
I know the fires that raged upon the ducks of Moom while the Republic died around you. You know war, you know battle. And I know of Malachor. You saw the heart of war, what Malachor wrought, yet you turned away from it. You are a wretched thing, a thing of weakness and fear. You are her apprentice in name only. I am the master. And that is why you will die. There will be another time, but it is not now, not here, while Korriban runs through him. She protects him, shields him. Find him, hunt him wherever he travels. He will not escape me again. I will bring his corpse to her, cast it at her feet. It will be as if killing her children. I will kill all she protects, all she shields, until her hands are drenched in blood.
is over. Face the challenges of this tomb alone. Are you ready?
do not heed the words of the Jedi Council, the Republic will fall if we do not act now. Already the Mandalorians have taken three systems along the rim. They will only grow more powerful with time. Come stand with me. We will use our might to help the Republic in its time of need. Join Revan and I. Together we will battle this menace. The Jedi Council is wise, but will take too long to deal with this threat. We must act now to stop the Mandalorians. I have heard of you. Your masters speak well of you, of your skills in battle. Join us. The Jedi Council is wise, but can make mistakes. History has proven this time and time again. The Council seems content to watch, to debate, while entire systems fall to the Mandalorians. If we don't act now, there may be no Republic army to assist in the future. I sense you will join us. What are your reasons? A good reason. Delay would have brought ruin, and there was much suffering. You had to act. It was within our power to end the war, and the Council chose to debate behind closed doors while planets burned. Their vaunted wisdom bred only in action, and that would have led to destruction greater than anything born of the dark side. So, if you could do it all again, the real question is, would you? The Mandalorians await on the edge of space, eager to crush the Republic. You know how this turns out. Would you do it any different, knowing what it costs you? Knowing what it costs the rest? So do you see so far, that you know that it would be for the best? Such arrogance. And now you are all alone. Would you join me now? You didn't follow Revan and I down our path. Join us. Your journey hasn't ended yet. She didn't join us that day. But in time, she came to our way of thinking. And even before then, she wavered and wondered what would have happened. It is a familiar path. There were those who wished to follow you to war, yet remain behind. They came to hate you for the choices they wished to make. Are you so certain? Every step along the way, we did what we thought was right. Perhaps the same path lays before you, but the time of words are done. Now it is time you experienced the full power of the dark side.
Tom says we've lost another heavy droid transport. How can we break through the Mandalorian lines without support? The path is mined and the place is crawling with enemies. I know we've got our orders to press forward, but we're at quarter strength. We can't, General. It's impossible. We need to retreat. We know, General. But we just don't have enough men to accomplish our objective, no matter how important. We already lost half the men just getting to the path. They've got the rest of the company pinned down by the crash site. You can't possibly ask the troops to go forward. If you ask us to charge, will it make a difference? Will our sacrifice mean something? We... 
We will press forward if you ask it. The path is mine. If you ask us to charge, there will be losses, General. Thank you, General. Thank you.
are to be commended for making it this far. You've revisited the dark moments of your past and now you must face the present. Confusion is natural. The others and I will help you understand. Get away from her! She's a dark Jedi. Atten, I've had enough of your snide contempt. I will protect myself from this foul-mouthed ruffian. Hey, what's the commotion here? Stay out of this, Beodor. This is a personal dispute between Atten and myself. You're threatening Atom with a lightsaber, and I'm supposed to just stay out of it? No. The three of you would challenge me? You sorely underestimate the power of the Force. Think again, Kreia. Your dark influence will end. Your friends are all arrayed against me. Will you stand for this? You, of all people, would judge me so. Am I not worthy of redemption? So you will do nothing? Apathy is death. Worse than death because at least a rotting corpse feeds the beasts and insects. Apathy is death. Apathy is death. Apathy is death. Apathy is death. Statement. Apathy is death. 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 The dangers you faced in this tomb were real, but these images of the past serve to prepare you for your future. Surely you have felt what awaits. Events are shaping themselves about you, seeking to draw you into their center. You overestimate the power of the tomb. Any change you feel is coming from within yourself. Instinctually, you know your true path. Trust in your feelings. They will lead you in conquering the many challenges that the future holds for you. Sometimes, a momentary insight is worth lifetimes of experience. You may not yet understand what you learned here. That wisdom will come in the future. Search the room you are in. You should be able to unlock a passage that leads outside the tomb.
Yes, General. situation on Onderon has stabilized. 